How are you guys doing? Today's video is going to be regarding the OBD2 codes from P0120 to P0124, which are related to the throttle position sensor. I'm going to show you a couple different ways to test them, uh, the throttle position sensors, on the vehicle, off the vehicle, using a voltmeter, ohmmeter, and a portable scanner. And I'm also going to describe what these codes mean. Alright, so the first code is the P0120, which means throttle position sensor circuit malfunction. Your throttle position sensor, or at least the average throttle position sensor, will have three wires. You have a power wire, signal wire, and ground wire. The power wire will receive five volts from the ECM, the car's computer. The signal wire is the one that will send the signal back to the computer with the uh, information sent by the sensor. At idle, you're going to have about 0.45 volts or half a volt. In a wide open throttle, the entire, far, the entire 5 volts will be sent back. Uh, the throttle position sensor is normally bolted on the opposite side of your throttle cable, on your throttle body. So the throttle position sensor will move as you accelerate. And that's the reason why, as the resistance changes in your throttle position sensor, the voltage sent back to the computer will also change. Now, if the information that is being sent by the MAP sensor or mass airflow sensor, whichever the case, and the information sent by the throttle position sensor does not match the specified parameters, that also could trigger the uh, PC0120 code. So those are the factors that can also be taken into account. The next code is P0121, which is throttle position sensor circuit or range performance problem. That code will be triggered when there is a short in the sensor or during its travel when you accelerate, there is a break. So there is something shorting the sensor out or the resistor inside is malfunctioning and it has a lack of signal or short to ground signal, it will trigger that code. One of the things that you want to make sure of before just replacing the sensor uh, will be obviously tested with an ohmmeter which I'll show you later and make sure your connections are clean plus make sure that the wiring harness is not rubbing against a metal part of your vehicle because during vibration or during just regular driving, if the harness is touching metal, it would short the ground, which, in, which it would cause that code. So it's always important to review the simple stuff before replacing an expensive sensor that may not fix your problem after all. Next code is P0122, which is throttle position sensor circuit low input. This code will be set when the initial voltage when the car is at idle is somewhere between 0 0.17, 0 0.2 volts or less depending on the manufacturer. Remember that the uh, voltage that is sent to the computer at idle should be anywhere between 0 0.45 to half a volt. So anything less than that, like I said, 0 0.17 or less is definitely going to trigger this code. Now, some of the sensors are adjustable. You'll see a slot on the mounting, which at that point you can try to adjust it. You know, you can move it a little bit and try to set the initial voltage, you know, testing it with your voltmeter and try to come close to uh, 0.45 to half a volt. Now, fixing the initial voltage uh, is not enough either. You have to make sure that when you accelerate to wide open throttle, you have the 5 volts. Otherwise, you'll end up triggering another code, um, which w will be related to the high input. So when you have a bad sensor, adjusting it may not cure your problem. But it doesn't hurt to try, provided that you verify both signals, the uh, idle and the wide open. Next code is P0123, which is throttle position sensor high input. This code will set when your key is on and the throttle position sensor signal is somewhere around the 4 volts or maybe even higher 
or your car is at idle and, and the voltage is that high uh, when it's supposed to be only half a volt. That's normally caused by a defective sensor. It's easy to find out because all you have to do is just read what's coming out with your voltmeter and you'll be able to determine if that's your problem. So P0123, so P0 you know, 9 out of 10 times, it's probably going to be caused by a defective sensor. Last code related to the throttle position sensor is the P0124, which is throttle position sensor circuit intermittent. As the code implies, intermittent means intermittent signal. So at some point during its travel, you will have either absence of signal or spike to high or low. Um, pretty much the sensor signal will be all over the place. And as you test it with an ohm meter, you will definitely be able to know if that is what's causing it. Don't forget to check your connections though, because if your connection is bad or is corroded, it could also trigger that code. And you know, it, it can be just fixed just by cleaning your electrical connection. Very simple. So don't just jump to replace the sensor before doing a little bit of troubleshooting. Otherwise you're going to spend money that didn't need to be spent. And we're going to move on to testing the sensor outside the vehicle. To make my job easier, what I'm going to do is I'm going to put these clips on the pins that I'm trying to test which is the signal on the ground. If I'm going to do an ohms test, I need the signal on the ground because obviously the power is not being used during an ohms test. So let's put that there. Put the ground with the ground, put the positive with the signal and turn my ohm meter on to a thousand. Okay, so once I have my leads connected to the ohm meter, you can see where it's at, and then what you do, you use a screwdriver and you move it very slowly, and you want to find, make sure that there are no breaks in it. You know that as you gradually move it, the resistance change naturally, and you don't have any spikes. You know you can move it back very slow make sure that your signal moves very very smoothly if it's digital you can um, see it that way I'm using an analog ohm meter just so you can actually see the gauge but there you go so that's that's how you want to test for resistance and then like I said the wires that you use is the ground in the signal wire. This by the way was a Nissan sensor. This is a GM throttle position sensor. Slightly different in design. Uh, the way to find out which one is your wire, which one is your signal wire, which one is your power, which one is your ground. When, when the sensor is connected on the vehicle and the harness is on, you slide paper clips in them, uh, making sure that they don't touch each other. You use a voltmeter to probe, you turn the key on, and then you probe each wire that's coming, that is connected to the sensor. You're going to find one that has 5 volts. You're going to have one that has like half a volt, which is your signal. You're going to have one that doesn't have any power, which is your ground. So at that point, you just take note of which one is which, and then you can just go ahead and test it. Simple as that. To test the throttle position sensor on the vehicle, you can do it two different ways. You can unplug it, do the ohms test the way I show you uh, when the sensor was outside, or you can just leave it connected instead, peel the insulation back, turn your key on, find out which wire is which, you know, which one's your signal, which one's your ground, which one is your power, and with the key on but without the engine running, just the key on, uh, what you do, you Probe your voltmeter, not the you know you set it on volts this time, uh, low voltage that way you can read the <coughs> the five. So you put it on your signal at idle with that accelerator, and it should be between 0 0.45 to five. As you accelerate, as you move the accelerator, you know you can move it with your hand. Just 
it's in the opposite side of the sensor, it's very easy to do. So as you move it, the signal should change. Uh, doing it connected is also a good way to set the initial setting, which is, you know, the half of all that we already discussed. So you can do it either way. You can do it with the uh, ohm meter disconnected, voltmeter with it connected. <coughs> all right, so the last test I'm going to show you is with the handheld scanner. What you want to do is turn your key on and set it all to your vehicle that you're working with and then you're going to go to view data feature on your handheld scan. So it's going to open all the sensors and then what you want to do is you want to select your throttle position sensor. You want to find it because that's the one that you're trying to read right now. <coughs> TPS and then as you accelerate the value will change. See right there is 99.6 percent and then when you decelerate then it goes back down. It will change as, as you're accelerating. You can also try to view it in a graph by pressing enter and it will graph it for you. So this will give you even a better idea because you can Accelerate a little bit, see what it does. Plus, you can start your car. pretty much get an idea you know what a healthy throttle position sensor does you got very healthy signals you know no matter where you are now you guys know how to check the throttle position sensor in a few different ways uh, on the vehicle off the vehicle with the ohm meter, voltmeter, handheld scanner this information should be all you need to diagnose a bad sensor and hopefully when you're going through the testing your problem may just be a bad connection and it will save you from buying a sensor uh, just because the code said doesn't mean that replacing the part is going to take care of the problem that's one of the problems that a lot of uh, auto enthusiasts that may not have a lot of experience will run into. They'll just, whenever they see a code, they'll replace the part that's related to that code and hoping that it fixes their problem. Sometimes they get lucky and then it gets fixed, but a lot of the times that was not the case. And then you ended up spending money when you didn't need to. Plus, when you only have one code, it's easier to figure it out. But you have several codes, then you really have to figure out which one really is your problem. Make sure you visit our online store. We have a lot of deals on auto accessories, tools, very great prices. See you next time.